Welcome back to Foxy TV episode 152. Last week we had a special Foxy Games edition of Foxy TV where we got you to vote on your favorite townhouse. I tallied all the votes and I want to announce the winner now. It was very close, it really was. But I'd like to say a big congratulations to Cassie for winning. That was townhouse B and she went with the, the tribal. But also congratulations to Phoebe and Bianca who did a great job. Thank you so much to everyone who watched, who voted, who participated. I really appreciate it and I hope Hope you enjoyed that episode. I'm now going to show you two installs before finishing the episode with some information from Jake. There's some things that we still do now that maybe you'd, somebody from the outside looking in would say, why are you doing that? Let's go to our first install in Gordon Park where Cassie was our lead stylist and then we'll go straight into the second install in Wynnum where Sil was our lead stylist. Okay, so we are here today in Gordon Park doing an install at this beautiful big house. It's pretty wet today, which is making things a little bit trickier than normal. We've got rugs and things on the floor at the entrances to try and keep as much water out as possible. to finish it off. How's it all gone? Good. Looks beautiful so far. We're nearly done. Just pretty much cushions and little bits and pieces left to go. What are we doing? Can you tell so, us about this house? <laughs> yeah, we're in Wynnum West. Yep. Um, we're just coming in here, brightening up the place, making it look nice and fresh, making it look nice and plush, and yeah, giving it a bit of life. A few episodes ago, we heard from Jake on doing things that don't scale and how it can actually help you grow your business. I didn't get to use all the footage from that video, so I wanted to show you this short three minute clip now. There's some things that we still do now that maybe you'd, somebody from the outside looking in would say, why are you doing that? As the, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of examples for me and Phoebe as the business owners. Some people might look at it and say, well, you've got a team now, you probably could have given that to somebody else or you could outsource it. Um, especially with how much we have going on and how busy we are, some of the things that Phoebe does still um, and that I do probably, uh, you know, to sit back and look at it, you'd say that's probably not a best use, the best use of your time, but we still do it for a reason. Um, some examples would be Phoebe still gets involved in doing selections for properties, um, even though she's got a team of you know, seven or eight stylists now. She doesn't have to do that stuff, but part of the reason is she wants to be involved still. She enjoys it. but. It's good for her learning and always keeping up with different trends and things that she likes to see. Um, but also from a training point of view, from a culture point of view, for, the, for our business and our team internally, it's one of those things that even though she doesn't have to do it, it's good for her team to see her doing that and being part of it um, and they learn from her. So she, she's always said, you know, maybe she doesn't do as much as she used to, but she's always stayed involved. Um, and maybe she doesn't go out to site as much as she used to. She's always involved in what's happening. Um, she still looks at all the photos of, of install. She always has conversations about every install, things like that, that when you get to a you know a scale of business that maybe we are, or maybe we're getting close to, you might say, you're at the point where you need to run the business as opposed to doing the, the actual styling. But Phoebe wants to, keep her hands on at least a portion of that for those, you know, team culture, training, and for her own enjoyment. So things like that. The other one that kind of came to mind was, you know, we don't get everything perfect every time from a styling point of view, or you don't always hit exactly what a client wants. Um, and every styling business would know that it would see this. You know, somebody says, I don't like a particular look or a particular piece of furniture or little changes that it's easy to go, well, we're not styling for you. We're styling for the market and for to sell your home. And, you know, I know that a lot of stages can get frustrated by that and we we do as well at times um, we're very quick on most of those occasions to say absolutely we'll make a change you know within reason we'll give them the spiel um, you know we'll, we'll tell them why we've chosen a particular um, look or piece of furniture or whatever it is but at the end of the day if you're not happy we're happy to come back and change it and when you're doing four or five installs a day and that many pack-ups as well 
Going back to a property to switch over a couple of armchairs, it actually has a big impact on your the running of the day and the logistics team and everything. It'd be very easy when you get to you know, the, the size that we are with the number of installs that we're doing to say, that doesn't make sense for us to go and do that. So I'm sorry, we're gonna stand our ground. We've got our terms and conditions, we're not making the change. We still make those changes purely because as a business, our reputation is important. Our relationship with our agents is important. Um, it's something that you know, might not seem like a particularly, um, you know, I guess best use of, use of your time as a business, um, going and changing two armchairs because the client wants it. It's not particularly scalable, or it doesn't seem scalable. For us, we still do it because there's other things that, uh, other benefits that we get from that. That is it for episode 162. Now, Jake and I are off to the States for a week tomorrow, so there won't be an episode next week. Uh, so I guess we'll see you in two weeks time.